As we finally begin to close out the year 2020, we can start looking forward to things to come in 2021. In 2020, we saw many welcome additions to the Unity game engine, and Unity is keeping up with that good momentum heading into the new year. So today, I'd just like to go over some of the things that we can expect from Unity in 2021, including new releases of the Unity editor, as well as some packages that I know many of you are going to be very excited about, like Unity's data-oriented technology stack. But before we get into all that, I would just like to thank the sponsor of today's video, the Jaro Console. The Jaro Console is a debug console that you can add to your Unity project to help you test and debug your game. You can launch the Jaro Console from the Unity editor, but more importantly, you can use it while testing your game on a target device. Its visual interface makes it especially easy to run functions and check values in your game with only a few taps on the screen. If you want to see it in action, I recently made a full tutorial video where I show you how to use the features of the Jaro console to help you debug and fine tune your game while on a mobile device. I'll have a link to that video in the description below. I'll also include a link to the Unity Asset Store where you can pick up the Jaro console today. Alright, so let's start things off with the one that I know most of you are going to be wanting to know more about. And this is because on pretty much like every video that Unity puts out on their YouTube channel and like every blog post talking about new features they're bringing to the game engine, the comment section is just full of people asking about Unity Dots, Unity's data-oriented technology stack, and when will it come out? You know, when are we going to see the full 1.0 release of Unity Dots? And I'm here to tell you that I don't think it's going to be as simple as, you know, we just wake up one day and we see, oh, you know, Dots 1.0 is available today. If you've been experimenting with Unity's Dots, then you'll know that many of these things have been released as packages that you can download from the package manager. And they're in various stages of development. You know, some have more features than others. And you'll see that some of these packages are already out of the preview phases and are available in a more, you know, verified form. And it wouldn't be surprising to me for us to start seeing some of these packages become verified packages, you know, slowly over time, not necessarily all of them at once. It's clear that Unity wants to make their data-oriented technology stack a core part of the engine in the future. But because of that, they really want to take their time developing on this and they don't want to rush this out. They want to make sure that everything is working properly and it's well documented before they you know, release it into the wild. Now, I'm going to say something a little bit controversial here, and that is that I don't think that many of you even need to worry about the data-oriented technology stack in 2021 at all. Now, I know that many of you who are getting into game development, you, know, you see all these things about Unity's data-oriented technology stack and how much high performance that it can bring to your projects, and you see that you know it's kind of the future of Unity and it's how games are going to be made in the future. However, to be honest, I don't think you really need to worry about any of that at all right now. Right now you should just be focusing on making games, you know, the tried and true, well-documented way, the way people have been doing it for decades in order to make your projects. And then once you get to the point where, you know, you can actually take advantage of some of those performance benefits, then maybe you can start looking into the data-oriented technology stack. But definitely do not underestimate the power of mono behaviors. There's so much amazing things that you can do with the traditional way to develop games in Unity. And I think that you should fully explore that first before moving on to more experimental features of the Unity game engine. Now, if you already are extremely familiar with developing games in Unity and you wanna challenge yourself and learn the data-oriented technology stack, by all means, go for it. That's why they have it available for us in preview form. And just because you're not using Unity's data-oriented technology stack doesn't mean that you can't take advantage of some of the other awesome features that they're bringing to the Unity game engine in 2021. So as far as product releases go, in quarter one of 2021, we can expect the Unity version 2020 to go into its long-term support release. This means that all the great features of Unity 2020.1 and 2020.2 are going to be available in a stable release form for you to develop games on. Now these long-term support releases of Unity are going to be the ones that you want to use if you're making a commercial game project because they're going to be the most stable and have the least amount of issues. Now considering that it's early December right now and Unity 2020.2 is still in its beta form, I can expect that we'd probably see the 2020.2 full release to come out, you know, at the end of this year, maybe early next year, and then we'll see this long-term support release of Unity 2020 probably in, you know, the mid to late quarter one of 2021. And the releases of Unity 2020 have brought a whole host of quality of life improvements. I've made a couple videos on them and you can check them out up here if you want to learn a little bit more about those. 
and I'll leave some links in the description to some blog posts on more of these quality of life features. As far as Unity 2020.1 goes, I would expect that we see our first full release of this available you know, probably right after the 2020 long-term support release. So we're looking at probably March to April of next year is when we see this release. Of course, it is an alpha version right now, so you can experiment with that a little bit if you do like. And Unity 2020.1 is focused on a lot of editor stability improvements for you to you know, improve your workflows as well as be able to develop on all the latest and greatest platforms. So they're adding support for you know PS5, Xbox Series X and S, as well as Apple's new custom chipset. They're also gonna be focusing on a lot of new improvements to the rendering pipelines, specifically maturing the universal render pipeline, which is something that I'm going to be focusing on a lot more on next year as well, as I start to develop more 3D games. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss that on those. And they're also going to be stabilizing the high definition render pipelines, so you can get those you know, high quality AAA level visuals out of your games. Another major focus for them is visual scripting. They wanna bring the Bolt Visual Scripting Editor right built into the Unity game engine, which is going to be extremely useful for people who are brand new to Unity and have never you know, done any programming or anything like that in their lives. One of the interesting things that they mentioned with this is they want to bring some sort of consistency to all the node-based tool sets throughout the Unity editor. So once you kind of learn Bolt and are familiar with that all, then a lot of those skills that you learned are gonna transfer well over to things like Shader Graph and Mechanim. And then the final major thing that they're gonna be focusing on in 2021 is going to be networking and multiplayer. Of course, if you've been around with the Unity game engine for a while, you know that they've kind of experimented with different forms of multiplayer. And a lot of the times people end up just kind of using some third party packages and plugins for the multiplayer stuff. Now I expect to see a whole lot of major developments within the multiplayer space in Unity in the coming year. I know one of the big ones that they're going to be working on is bringing the dots netcode basically back end over to the you know game object side of things. So you can you know take advantage of some of those high performance benefits of dots while still using traditional mono behaviors. So anyways, these are some of the things that we can expect from Unity as we head into 2021. Please let me know what things that you're most excited for, as well as what things that you want to learn more about in the coming year. And once again, thank you to the sponsor of today's video, the Jaro Console. You can find them on the Unity Asset Store using the links down in the description below. Anyways, I hope you guys found today's video helpful. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about the Unity game engine. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below. And I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one.